10, 9, 8. You want answers! I want the truth! Get ready for two guys who can handle the truth. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! But we can! Dave Palumbo! Chris Aceto! RxMuscle.com presents Heavy Muscle Radio! Welcome to another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo and I'm joined as always by Chris the Technician Aceto on this October 23rd, 2017 afternoon. And uh, Chris, it was a, uh, it was a, it wasn't a busy weekend, but it was, they, there was stuff going on in the bodybuilding world this past weekend. There was a uh, pro qualifier up in Canada, the uh, Ben yep. Weeder Cup that took place and, uh, I guess it was one of these uh, new shows now they're having that is open to pretty much anyone. You can come from the United States. Well, you can come. Be from nice, the- nice to be told that. But go ahead. I, you know, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about it. Well, I, you know, there's a lot of people getting ready for the nationals who could have done it and knew nothing about it. Hmm. Is it uh, maybe because it's a is it a Rafael Santoja show or is it a NPC Jimanian show? I mean, I can't figure these things well, out yet. I think it was it, it was still a uh, considered some t- sort of a IFEB Amateur League show this year. Next year it won't be. Um, I, I, from what I understand, Ron Hayes, who's uh, up there in Canada and runs the whole you know eastern part of Canada, there will be uh, working with the IFEB Pro League. So I'm assuming it's going. to... I think they're changing the name of the amateur organization. I don't know what the initials are. It's not NPC. It's something else. But there'll be an affiliate. And I told you there's going to be a lot of affiliates throughout the world. I'm, you know, I'm talking to the guy who won the overall, Phil Klahar, and yeah. he um, is going to be – he's actually from Tampa, believe it or not, which is about two hours north of me. So he's going to be driving down here this week, and we're gonna, I'm going to interview him right in the studios. He's actually from Jamaica, believe it or not. He's been a resident of the U.S. for, for three years, and uh, I guess he, he, he's, he can't – I can't do the U.S. shows, I guess. So you this should – this show didn't require that he do any of the, that he be a citizen of the U.S. So he went up there and he and he got it and he figured he had done the uh, he competed in Aruba at some show uh, in August. It was called the Ben Weeder Classic there. And he oh took yeah, third. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I was going to say yeah. he must have been because I helped someone there who got second. So oh, he must have. So yes, yeah, so the chairman of the I was going to say he must there, have beat the guy that I was helping. Yeah, they, they told him to go up to Toronto uh, in uh, October and do this show. Since he couldn't do the U.S. Nationals, and uh, he did, and he, and he won, so congratulations to Phil. You know, I, I looked at you know you you said you had helped the light heavyweight guy there, and uh, and, and you sent me pictures of him. I'm like, who the hell beat this guy? And, and then I went and looked at some of the pictures uh, at Muscle Insider website there, and uh, Phil is uh, he's got a lot of muscle on him. He was, was really well conditioned too. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, that's what I was told. And I didn't see all the pictures from the open classes and this and that, but he reminds me. Told. Remember Desmond Miller? Yeah, I know Desmond Miller. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, he reminds me of his physique is reminiscent of Desmond yeah. Miller. I, I feel, at least I I see the resemblance. Just even of his waistline, he has like a there's a certain look there that just is, he doesn't look facially like him, but he definitely has like uh, something that is reminiscent of Desmond's uh, physique at least. Mm-hmm. Although Desmond had I think bigger legs than him. Yeah, for sure. Crazy legs. Freaky. Des, for those who don't remember Desmond Miller, Desmond Miller beat Evan Santapani the first year Evan did the When I was helping Evan and he won the uh, junior nationals that year, then we went to nationals and Desmond beat him in the in the supers there and he was second and then obviously he came back the following year and won the nationals. But uh, Desmond was, was a good bodybuilder. Yeah, phenomenal bodybuilder. He got, he got sick. You remember? He got sick. Well, we were just talking to... about people getting sick. Yeah. yeah. What happened? He got... He was he was not doing well for a while. He was in some kind of a crazy, you know, in the hospital. I, I don't, you know, it's so long ago. I don't even remember. Yeah, uh, it's it's crazy, but it's but <laughs> it's insane how quickly uh, times change. We put up an RX Muscle Classic interview um, this past weekend, like we do look, try to do every Sunday, and uh, Sid picked out the uh, Jason Ha interview I did with him when he won the USA Championship. Oh, and crying. he cried like a little baby. Yeah, it was two thousand. I, I think that's the best interview of all time. Thank you. Do you know what year that was done in? Yeah, that was done in, I'll tell you exactly, uh, 2010. You're right. And that's oh, seven years ago. Can you believe yeah, that? because I'm, seven I remember that, years? U- that USA was a stacked, super heavy USA. Yeah. I mean, stacked out of its mind. Mm-hmm. And I remember, uh, I remember because, you know, he was big and he was round and... 
I didn't think he was going to win, actually. And I know he was a teenage, you know, national former champion. And he had a lot of hype coming into the show. And uh, when you did the interview, that was it. It was just, like, cathartic for him. It was just like... And I got him right before Blackman signed him. Like, Blackman was going to sign him, like, like 30 seconds later. uh... Well, he couldn't cry twice. So, so you know what I mean? (laughs) I got the interview, and then he got signed by Blackman. It didn't matter. And then after when Blackman did the interview, it was like, yeah, I want to train hard, you know. (laughs) Now, interview him. Interview Jason. Make him cry. Get him to cry. Get him to cry. Pour some uh, water on his face. Maybe it'll look like he's crying. (laughs) You know, people. Last week we did that. Uh, we I advertised the radio show as the the the, the lost Nasser tapes. Hidden, yeah, the, the lot. Yeah, the people were pissed and... off. They didn't think I put enough Nasser in there. They like I. It was clickbait. They're like saying clickbait, clickbait. So they put four minutes of of, of him talking about Greg Kovacs in there, and we talked about him for another twenty minutes, probably. It's the greatest. The, these these this week and last week were probably the greatest tribute to Nasser that anyone ever has done. In the history of bodybuilding, I mean, who's really done any tribute to Nasser? I guess no one. Chris has got a client who sounds like Nasser. We wouldn't get him to call and ask yeah, Nasser. Yeah, but he, but he, he, he botched it because he left me a voicemail trying to imitate Nasser, and I, and I realized, you know, <laughs> when you try to imitate him, you don't sound like him. You only sound like him when you're speaking yeah. like yourself. Yeah, yeah. Do you think the all these uh, shows they got now, the that you can kind of like, like, if, like, say for instance, San Marino, uh, John and Rico's show. In December, anyone you could you can get on an airplane here and fly out to um, San Marino, well, and you can compete yeah. and get a pro card. I mean, do you think that's good, or you think it's that now that it's kind of I, open? I, I think it's good, but it, it just you know what it it's bothersome to me because I've you know I posted look someone who I, I was working with go, is in Canada, one hundred ninety eight pounds essentially wins his class. Um, you know, he's good enough to be a pro. They don't give him a pro card. What is the point? I mean, why be so stingy with pro cards in the past? Why? What? I well, now they handed him out like crazy. I'm okay. surprised. I never understood it, Dave. We've, you've said it ad nauseum on this show. Like, why in bodybuilding have they been so tight with giving out pro cards where it's like, okay, 400 bikini girls, 400 men's physiques, you know. You, 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 know, you mean you the bodybuilding. Vac- you mean the bodybuilding yeah, pro you, cards. Yeah, yeah, bodybuilding. In vacuum, you, you know, you can do a vacuum good. You're, you're a classic bodybuilding pro. Uh, Here's what bothers me. that they You got the Masters Nationals where they give out a ton of pro cards to the men bodybuilders. But they're all Masters guys like that, that are probably, ne- you know, most of them will compete, but they're not going to do anything. But then you got the, you know, the... The real tough shows, and they're not giving out as many. You know, I maybe the, the, the maybe what they got to do is rather than hand out so many pro cards at one particular show, make a few more pro qualifiers. Well, We've said it before: Junior USA, Junior Nationals for bodybuilding should give a pro card at least to the overall winners. Um, you do that and cut back the the double pro cards in the in the uh, in the nationals, which for first and second, I don't like that. Well, I think you got to win the class. You know, you know, bodybuilding so. civil war is good for people trying to get pro cards. Apparently, well, you know, you saw the new uh, changes they're making uh, in the IFBB, the Olympia qualifications. I haven't studied it. I've only heard okay. of it because uh, just, I can I'm, tell I'm, you. I'm just too overwhelmed. I did it. I did a video. You know that that I've been complaining in the past couple of Olympias that, that there's too many people on the show. You know that I've been saying that. I, I, I matter of fact, I've been ranting about. Well, it. Well, Dave, you, what do you know? <laughs> you, you're just a you know radio yeah. hack. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, you know, I, I've been just I've been annoyed by sitting through like 40 men's physique Olympia guys and 45 bikini you know winners. Uh, who are in on the Olympia stage? You know, I I I have been saying this should be somehow they should eliminate it and get it down to ten or fifteen people, the best in the world. That that's all that should be at the Olympia, and I don't the, the solution that they they put in place is not perfect, but it's better. If the the, the rule is now if there's less than twenty five pro shows, okay, in a division, say like uh, bodybuilding, usually has less than twenty five. <laughs> the rules are the same pretty much. It's the um, it's the all the winners of the classes, and it's instead of the top five point getters, it's the top three point getters, and of course the top five from the Olympia from the year before requalify. So uh-huh. y- you're going to have essentially the same. You'll have two less people possibly because you're not going to have the you're not going to have the top five point getters. 
I'm not, but you know what? The men's open is really never overstacked with too many people anyway. So that, I'm okay with that. Now, if there's more than 25 competitions uh, in a year, pro competitions, like bikini and men's physique seem to have an awful lot, then the rules change. Then it's, I, I guess, the top three from the Olympia, or the top five from the Olympia, requalify as always. And then it's the 20 top point getters. And, and, what, and so it doesn't, winning a show doesn't ensure that you go to the Olympia. It just gives you a lot of points. So they, not only are they giving second through fifth points, they're, they're ranking the, the, the winner as points too. So, but the winners get like double the points of the second place person. So you get a lot of points for winning a show. But just by winning a show, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily qualify for the Olympia. So it's going to make you have to compete more. Including in bodybuilding? This is, yes. But bodybuilding well, doesn't the, have enough shows. So it'll never, well, it'll never go to that because it'll never be more than 25 shows. Okay, got it, got it. So it, it really only applies to bikini, uh, men's physique, figure. Uh, those are probably the only divisions that will be affected by this. I think that maybe they should have done that for all the, all the divisions, and no matter how many shows there are. But uh, it's a step in the right direction. It means that they're willing yeah. to work on it. And you know what? It's not fair that, look, I know the Olympia people make money on their show, but they got to give a lot of prize money out too. It, it's a tough show. I'm sure there's a lot of expenses. They got to fly all the athletes in and put them up in hotels. To me, I would rather see them bring less people and give more prize money away. Um, it's a waste to bring people that are going to come in, you know, 60th place, you know, or whatever the, you know, the last place of, uh, of bikini or men's physique is 45th place. I mean, come on, that's it's a it's a waste to bring someone in. Uh, it should it should be the elite of the elite. So we're moving in the right direction. I think that this is a, a good thing that they're doing, but uh, I think we can make it more severe. You know, it's it sucks. It it hurts to say to a person who wins a pro show, hey, you're not you're not good enough to go to the Olympia, but. It's the truth. Now they ranking the the pro shows too. So it, like the Arnold and the uh, New York Pro and the Pittsburgh Pro, they're worth more points. So like if you win that, you're going to get a lot more points than if you win, say, you know, the uh, bikini. Uh, I don't know the Tennessee bikini pro show, you know, something like that. So I think that that's a, a good move on the IFBB's part. I like it. Um, Obviously, you've been seeing there's a lot. Of, I don't know if you saw. There's a lot of tension in uh, down in Australia there, down under. Uh, no, what's Paul happening? Graham, who is uh, uh, who runs yeah, the I'm IFBB Paul. down there for a hundred years, uh, the amateur league, I should say. Yep. He um, what's he doing? Well, it's you know, he's. To, I guess yeah, he's sticking he with Rafael Santoa, and you know, Tony Doherty is, is going to be doing you know the Arnold Classic uh, amateur. I guess it'll be affiliated with the NPC, you know, the, the IPB Pro League. So, in other words, if you win the amateur, you know, competition at that Arnold, you're going to get a pro card in the IPB. So, I don't know. Paul Graham had a show this past week, and someone sent me a screenshot, and he supposedly was bad on the IPB, went. and he's saying they don't care about the athletes, and that it was they could have avoided Dallas McCarver's death could have been avoided if it would have been. Wait, you know, wait, 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 wait! Backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. Yeah. Say that again. They're es- essentially uh, assigning r- uh, blame to the IFBB. For um, for not caring enough about their athletes and and, and causing the death of Dallas McCarver, so okay, as opposed to as opposed to what are they doing about caring about their athletes? No so what is Paul doing about caring about the athletes? <laughs> no idea. But what has he done in the past about caring about the athletes? I agree. I don't know. So I mean, how, and why is that bubbling up now that there's a civil war? I mean, people's yeah. people's you know got to be called out for their nonsensical comments on everything. Yeah. Look, there's nothing wrong if Rafael wants to hold you know his what? league. You, and, know, and you know what's going to happen there? I, I'll, I'll predict what's going to happen there. You're usually right. What's going to happen? Paul Paul is going to get torpedoed by Tony. You know why? Why? Because in the world of bodybuilding, Phil, Ramy, Roden, Dexter, Roly, Cedric, uh, everyone I left out in the Olympia, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not affiliated with Rafael. Right. Okay, so it's like saying, you know, the NFL versus the USFL. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Well, it, 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 it's almost like saying the NBA and the WNBA at this point. Right. You know. Well, what you're I mean, saying is what you're saying people, is the right. I understand why people like Paul, who's a very stand-up guy, and his wife is very, you know, legitimate people. And I, but I understand where their loyalty lies. Their loyalty lies with you know, history and the history is that they've been with the IPB, you know, since Ben and Joe, which is now Raphael. But in terms of, 
you know, siding yourself with what's going to be successful, I would be surprised if Raphael, on a professional level, rivals Mannion and the gang on a professional level. Because one has the Olympia. I mean, one has the Super Bowl. Right. And to, to beat the Super The only way you're going to beat the Super Bowl is, you know what, you're going to have to give $402,000 the first prize <laughs> of your show. Right. right. And whatever show you call that, you know, the, the Arnold Classic somewhere... I mean, Arnold's right in the middle, like split right down the middle, right? I th- I think it's it seems at this point that that, that the Arnold's that is, classics that are going to take place that's not going to last either. Well, look, if you have an Arnold Classic Pro uh, Pro Division, okay, it doesn't mean that you have to have an Arnold Amateur Division that that is is coincides with the it Pro Division. None of it matters. It seems, but it seems ridiculous if you're going to do it, the Arnold Amateur in Brazil and you win. Have, you're not going to have this Arnold like. B and Arnold A, you know, Arnold Ohio is not affiliated with Arnold Brazil. It's called, you know, at, at this point, it's called enemies. Right, but does it, Chris, does it really matter? Like, if, let's say there's five Arnold classics throughout the world, and every one of them has an IFBB Pro League show there. But some of them have IFBB amateur league shows, and some of them have NPC affiliate whatever amateur of shows. Of course it matters. Why? What does it matter? The judging matters. Watch the deal be judged. Well, you have different, but you Why? always had different judges. You always had different judges for the pro and the amateur. Always, they're never the same. So it doesn't matter. So the, it, the, the it sad part will be if you it, win, that, David. It matters because the people who host Ohio and the uh, uh, are and the people who host the Brazil show. And not th- their loyalty is where to Arnold or is it to it's to Arnold and Arnold if Arnold says hey we're having an IFBB Pro show here don't worry about it you're going to get Sean Roden in Brazil you're going to get him in Australia okay so he, so if he's Arnold fine. so if Arnold can have a show in Ohio and an Arnold in uh, in Brazil why can't uh, Heath Dexter Roley Roden Cedric Bonac compete at both of those they they can. They can't. The only thing right. changing. The only right. thing cha- The only thing changing is the amateur Stop that division. Yeah, what? watch. Yeah, watch them compete at both. That ain't gonna happen. You don't think so? No. What's the difference though? There's still a pro. As long as the pro show is IFBB. The difference is enemies. Enemies. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you might be I, right. I, I, the difference I, is. Listen, if there's a no split is amicable. So, so you. So do you think that? Didn't in other words, hold that, on. Didn't you tell me? Didn't you tell me that about divorces recently? <laughs> I did. I did. Sir. Did, you, you told me off the air. There's no such thing as an amicable divorce. No, it's impossible. Unless one person's gay, and even then, there's always some kind of like uh, no, you know, there's, an, there's animosity. There's, no, that's even worse. I didn't know he was gay. Yeah, that's 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 even worse. He was hiding it, or she was hiding it, or you know. <laughs> I was at the gym and she was off with her girlfriend, or I was at the gym and he was off with his boyfriend on the side. Yeah. So nothing's amicable. You know, I mean, uh, just like it's it's not going to play out like lovey dovey. Like right. it, that's which makes you know the interesting point is it's it's uh, I mean Arnold's got to say what that I you know the NPC does a great job and then he's going to say Raphael does a great job. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got to take the mic somewhere. I mean, he may. I don't know. May it's, it's good. Maybe, that's, maybe, that's maybe they won't have an IFBB Pro show. There, maybe it'll be this elite league that Rafael is starting. I don't know. It's, it's a good question. No one's, no one's commenting yet. So all I know is that Australia and uh, well, USA are old. Comment. That's a preemptive comment, yeah. and that's why. That's why I said down in Australia, the successful one is going to be Tony because Absolutely. the and that's nothing against the Grams, but it's and, and that's why I wanted to insert that that the very nice. Great good people, but the 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 issue really is in terms of success. Uh, who is right now the most successful bodybuilder in Australia? Professional Josh Lenardowitz. Okay, where is he going? Oh well, he's staying in the IPB Pro League, of course. Well, that, that answers that. So every single amateur who looks up to Josh, even though Josh, I know Dave said you don't work or lazy. <laughs> didn't you have a? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I said something but, about people complaining you know about I mean? contracts. Yeah. So, uh, you know, people who are in Australia who are 18, 19, or 25 years old trying to get their, quote, pro card somewhere, they're going to say, what's Josh doing? Oh, he's doing Tony's show. Okay, I want to be like Josh. 
then there's going to be you know, but then there's always the people who can't aren't good enough to turn pro, so they'll they'll oh good you they'll have go compete WNBA. someplace else. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean the you have the NBA and the you know the European Basketball League. Yeah. Which one's better? Yeah. You you can be a pro in Europe, right? Mm-hmm. Don't know a lot of good college basketball players who like maybe they got injured in the NBA or you know they. They 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 get cut from the NBA. They go get there. They go play in Croatia or somewhere in Europe, and and they're they're good basketball players, great basketball players. But it's not the, at the level of Michael Jordan. Here's what I this is what I, I, I think don't is, expect. I don't expect. I don't expect like uh, Europe to have some all of a sudden say, God, have you seen this guy? I think he's going to beat Ramy and Phil. Here's what I think is going to happen. This is what I think is going to happen because. They'll, Europe and whatever, Australia, whatever, they, there's going to be pockets where Raphael will still make money. I'll tell you why. Because he's got his little strongholds. These guys d- don't compete as pros anyway. They just do keep doing the same amateur shows over and over and over again. And it, it's it's like a little boys club, you know. It's like all the Middle Eastern. How many Middle Eastern guys really turn pro? A lot of them stay amateurs because the countries pay them. They'll just continue to, to compete in Raphael's league. They won't even know that there's anything else being offered. And he'll make money. The problem is he's going to have guys that are like, like you said, second string guys compared to the top guys in the world. So if you want to be the best in the world, you're going to have to compete in, a, in an IFEB pro qualifying event. And, and that's that'll be the people who are the best will go there. And then the rest of the people will either cross over, do both. Or whatever, because you know people will always find some div- organization where they can get become a pro. And I have a guy, and I'm not going to say it was uh, that I know that that turned pro in, in in one of these alternative organizations. And to be honest with you, he probably never would have ever been capable of turning pro in in the NPC. But he's happy, you know, and that's that's all that matters. But you know, there's a tro- you know, I always say there's a trophy somewhere for everyone, you know, if you look hard enough. <laughs> so. But that that's just the way it is. Now, I, it's funny. I was I don't even know. I was skimming uh, Facebook and, and uh, speaking of uh, breakups of relationships. And I saw a video, um, like a seminar that was given by uh, your ex, Laura Craval. Uh-huh. And she was talking about you know uh, her leg development and why she was having so much trouble with leg development. It was like a training s- uh, seminar she was giving. And she was saying, you know, I used to train like thousands of sets for my, my legs. Like I would do like you know 400 rep sets and and thinking i was going to bring in more detail and it just my legs just look worse and and I, and she gave you credit she said my ex chris said what the hell are you doing you know you don't train your upper body like that why are you training with four million reps just train them like you would train your upper body with you know heavy weight and you know typical bodybuilding straight sets and she said that changed her whole you know changed the whole look of her legs you know but, I don't uh, give much training advice, but that was probably a good tip. Yes, yeah, but she gave you credit, right? So I guess uh, the breakup wasn't I don't, so bad. I don't need, I don't need credit. <laughs> no, I know you don't, but but she did give you credit. She said that you you told her she was being ridiculous. It probably you credit. probably I waited. I didn't get the credit, and I'd say uh, probably off the air. I'd say, Dave, does my name mention on that video? You pro- she probably like, waited oh, three the, years. I didn't get the credit. She probably waited three years before listening to your to your uh, recommendations, but. Uh. I gave you your first chance. <laughs> right. I wish I had saved all the texts from Blackman that he sent. You, do you know who Emmerich Delzig is? Of course I do. Okay, Emmerich. I didn't realize Emmerich was so close to Joe Weider. Emmerich was giving me all the scoop on Joe Weider. I got. I'm going to get him on my. Yeah, he used to TV because show. Emmerich had. What did he introduce for a supplement? He had all kinds of little Bulgari- weird. The He's, Bulgarian yeah, tribes, tri- tri- yeah. tribulus rather. And Joe was selling it, and and. He was telling me all the gossip behind the scenes with Joe Weider and back in the day, and, and how uh, when they signed Ronnie, you know, uh, Vicky Gates wanted the contract, and Joe had never given out a contract before to women, you know, n- never. You know, Corey was in the magazines, but he, had, she never got paid or anything like that. No, he so, gave, he gave. I'll tell you, he gave um, Linda a contract. He gave Laura a contract. Right, but but this, I think, the first contract I think went to Vicky Gates. No, or, or am I wrong? No, no, no. So he, you know, it's a lot of these people, yeah. you know, tell him, tell him Chris Aceto said he's wrong or he's making up the stuff. <laughs> so because anyways, no, that's, 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 that's not true. Right, so the right. information is, but this is the, fun, this is the funny story. So, so he gave Vicky a, a contract to make Ronnie happy, you know, cause he, he was losing Mr. Olympia, you know, Dorian had left and, and, and so, uh, they wanted to make Ronnie happy. So they gave Vicky a contract and so then Ronnie said, Hey, why don't you give, um, he wanted. They wanted to give Chad Nichols a contract. Ronnie was so happy he was making money that he wanted everyone around him to make money too. 
and I guess I don't know. I guess Weeder was a little skeptical about giving Chad a contract, you know, because he thought he was associated with drug, you know, recommendations and everything like that. So Emmerich said that, that you know they said why don't you give why don't you give uh, Kim Shazewski a, a, a contract? He gave Kim a contract. So, so listen, so Joe's like, who's that? <laughs> so Emmerich's like, she's Miss Olympia. <laughs> He's like, because Joe didn't know it. He's like, black people knew thought, nothing about you know, the women. Joe, no, Joe probably thought that um, that Rachel was uh, still. <laughs> but Joe wasn't senile at this point. He just didn't care about the women. He knew nothing about what's going on with the women. So they that they gave uh, Kim a contract, you know. Uh, and so that was, uh, uh, and that was all because of Ronnie Coleman. So just I thought that was, it was and he told me a million stories. I, that was just one of the, the million stories that I thought was a really good story that no one re- probably knew behind the scenes type of stuff that went on. And uh, yeah, let's. He see. was also telling me how I'm sure Milos would be mad at me that Milos lo- lost money on his contract because Milos was making supposedly, and I'll have to have Milos come but, on. And well, Milos this. was with Metrax. Well, Milos at some point needed money. Uh, maybe Metrics had, had been sold at this point. And he, and he got to Emmerich, supposedly claims that he got him the contract with, with Weider. And Weider was paying him like 80 grand. And I guess Milos decided that he wanted to make more money. So he was going to make a power play. So he called up Joe and Emmerich told him not to do this and said, hey, Joe, you know, uh, I got an offer from a co- company for 100000 Oh, I know. I know Joe's I know Joe's answer right now. Well, Want me be Joe? Yeah, you be Joe. Joe, he, he, be, Joe, no, do Joe, me, I, you could be Milo Senja. I'm not on the TV show, but he'd reach out his hand and and he'd put his hand out, yeah. and and you and Milos would probably be like, "Why is he putting his hand out?" And he'd want to shake, you know, he'd hold it out, and you're like you'd be like embarrassed, like put your hand out to shake it, yeah. and he'd say, "Congratulations, I'm so happy for the contract <laughs> that you got." Right? That's, that's what he said. So then, so Milos, no, then, because I, I tried to play that with him once, and he said, "Congratulations." <laughs> he, got, he got up and left. So listen, this. Milos calls up Emmerich and he says, "Joe doesn't. Joe didn't buy it." I, he's like, "I told you not to, to, to pull that crap with with uh, yeah, Joe." Yeah, he hates that. I, I tried. I told Dave. I'm dead serious. I tried the same thing with him. He he put the, That's where I get the answer from. He put the hand out, and I didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> so and I'm like, Should I shake his hand? Or is he going to like shake my hand and say, you know, this is what I'm going to offer you? He said, "Congratulations, take it." <laughs> so Milos, <I> lied. <laughs> Milos calls him back, and he's like. Joe, Joe, do the Milos. Give me the little Milos. You got you got a better Milos than I do. Yeah, Joe. I I, I can't. I can't. I, I I did it that one time. It you was did it great. Time. So he calls yeah. Milos. Milos calls Joe back. Yeah, Joe. I got an offer from uh, Scott Conley for uh, four hundred thousand dollars biweekly. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Milos calls him back. He goes, "You know, I want to stay with the the, the, the best and the the, the, the grandfather, the father, godfather of a bodybuilding." And uh, I, I changed my mind. I, I, I will stay with you, Joe. Joe's like, "Okay, yeah, it's too late. Sixty too late. grand." <laughs> No, too late. No, no, no yeah, he I, said too late because I already signed someone else. But he knocked him down. He he said, "All right, I'll do you a favor. I'll keep you, but you know, I can only pay you sixty thousand now because I had to give yeah. twenty to someone else." So Milos lost twenty grand by by doing yeah, that. that. Oh, that's definitely that's a definite true story. <laughs> so so the the reason he told me this was because Emmerich said because Ronnie when he got well, I, Ronnie supposedly was making two hundred thousand guaranteed. I guess before before that uh, Connolly was paying him a hundred thousand, but he was matching his prize money. So if Ronnie would have won the Olympia, which was a hundred grand, I think back then he would have gotten three hundred thousand, Scott. But so he asked Joe for two hundred, I guess, guaranteed, no bonuses, you know that kind of who, thing. Who, who, Ronnie? Ronnie? Yeah. So yeah. Joe agreed to it, um, but so then Ronnie thought, well, maybe I should, 16, maybe I should ask for more. That's you know what that is. That's I think that's sixteen. Is that sixteen six six six? That's the devil's number. Sixteen six 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 a month. <laughs> is that what it comes out to? I think yeah. So so listen so. <laughs> he, Ronnie calls up to Emmerich. He goes, maybe I should ask for more. Should I call Joe back? He goes. I wouldn't call Joe back. This is what happened when Milos did that. And then he told the whole Milos story. But, yeah, I can't call him back. Can't, can't that, <laughs> after he agrees to it, right. So, anyway, I thought that was funny. Good old times. All right, let's, you know what? Um, I, I got to get I got to get to the Nasser. I was playing the Nasser tapes again. You know, last week we played the um, part about Greg Kovacs. But there was a part, you know, that I didn't hear the first time. And I caught it this past week when I was listening to it. Because it's a long interview. Where he talks about Sean Ray, and you know how we all love Sean Ray. So um, let me play what NASA's impression of Sean Ray was. Now this is you got to remember this is John Romano and 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 Lee Priest, okay, interviewing Nasser El Sambadi, 
And uh, Na- Lee Priest is asking Nasser uh, about, Sean, uh, about Sean Ray. Here we go. I'm going to play it. It might be a little long, but I, I think it's good. Here we go. Because, you know, apart from myself, you're probably one of the most talked about on the boards. And, you know, love you or hate you, people are always talking about you. So what is it with Sean? Why is Sean, when I see his post, he's always so negative towards you? Is there some sort of history there where Sean just doesn't like you? Because I know he doesn't like me, but I've often wondered why he has his hatred for you. I mean, I mean, I can just say about Sean Ray uh, that uh, he in general doesn't like anybody. I don't know who he really likes. Uh, he People likes who pay his, him. Uh, he maybe he likes his wallet or whatever. He likes money, yes. Uh, but otherwise, I don't know what he really likes. I really don't care. But uh, the problem of Sean is uh, he's, he's a man who has uh, just way too much anger. He has too much insecurities and a little self-esteem, which actually... Uh, you know, he pretends that he doesn't have it, but at the end, can only conclude that he's a narcissist who suffers from uh, NPD. He's selfish, cheap, greedy, and for sure he likes to twist the truth around, as I said recently, uh, you know, in some comments also right now on the phone. You know, um, I think uh, on the other side, I have to give him credit. He was one of the best bodybuilders ever, so uh, a great physique, but uh, somehow, you know, deranged uh, mentally. So, uh, again, you know, Sean Ray doesn't like anybody except himself. No, you can't have everything. Yeah. So- but, 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 you know, uh, uh, Lee and, and John, I don't think he likes you guys either, you know? <laughs> and maybe yeah, no. five people he likes. You know, especially hates- when you speak the truth. You know, you know, he's yeah. one of these guys who likes uh, that the people speak uh, the truth, but then, you know, he doesn't want uh, to say anything about him. I was recently in the Santee gym here in San Diego and met his former uh, girlfriend, Sasha, which is very nice. And she confirmed all the stories about him. So he should not actually point to his fingers at others and try actually to hide his own stories, you know? Well, like, what, what story? What, can you give us a specific story? Like, like what story did she confirm? Um, for example, uh, Sasha was the girlfriend of, uh, uh, of Sean Ray and Sasha uh, underwent a sex change. And uh, Sasha, who is a girl, who is a lady now, is a very, very nice person, very smart, uh, Asian-looking uh, female, and uh, with a good personality. She complained in the gym, and she was right, complaining that he's hiding that fact that uh, they've been dating. I mean, he should man up to that and then say how it is. You know, not say uh, stuff about me or about Flex Wheeler, that Flex Wheeler was a chicken and not really interested in competing. But at the same time, Sean Ray didn't ever do the European show because he was a chicken. He didn't want to go to Europe. He didn't want to go there and have all these battles with others because he knew he would be so selfish that nobody actually would uh, help him out with any, anything, you know, what he needs, if it's medications or any help or whatever. And besides that, he knew he can only keep shape for one day. But then he bitches again about Flex Wheeler, who was a serial competitor, Iron Man, and, and San Jose show and almost classic. And then Sean Ray pretends uh, he's making so much money with twenty, thirty, or forty thousand dollars once a year when he got the money from the Olympia. So he distorts a lot of stories. A lot of people try to believe that, you know, and, and so I'm just saying he's a nice guy from the outside, but if you know him uh, more in detail and there's more probably uh, in the future in my book about it, then you see he has uh, a different side uh, to himself as well. But how funny is how funny is Nasser? <laughs> Nasser looking like he wasn't going to talk about him at first, and then all of a sudden he yeah, started pulling yeah, all this yeah. stuff out. Oh yeah, and he he, 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 he called Flex oh, Wheeler a, a chicken, but John was a chicken because he could not go to European tour because he had everyone hated him and they would not give him the drugs, the, the medic, the what do you well, say, the medicines the, the, that he the, needed. The, the the interesting thing about John is he's it it's odd that collectively, almost universally, anywhere you go, people will tell you what a tremendous bodybuilder he was. Yes. Dead stop. Yeah. And then they'll tell you how much they don't like him. <laughs> you know, which is interesting because you can only compete until, you know, whatever, he competed in 2001. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's been retired ever since and, you know, people will people will remember you as a great you know bodybuilder on stage. You know, you got to live off the stage now, and you well, know. he seems to have no problem making money. That's for sure that he gets well, plenty I of mean, people to hire him. So, 
I just, you know, the, he he certainly doesn't have the likability factor. Yeah. Nasser's hysterical. Which you would say he doesn't care, but of course everyone wants to be liked. I mean, that's just, you know, people can say, oh, I don't care, but... And it's true to a point, but when almost... <laughs> that's why I said collectively, you know, universally, if you're not well-liked... Yeah. How funny is Nasser? Though? Nasser's like you know trying to be nice about the fact that Sean was was dating like a like a, a, a transvestite that was you know some girl that was originally uh-huh. a guy, and yes, and Sean was is embarrassed to admit uh, that uh, Sasha uh, was was a, a man and, and is now a woman and 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 that Sasha is insulted that Sean would not admit that they were dating <laughs> you know like that that's Nasser's way of like really digging Sean with but at the same time trying to like make play it off like ah it's not a big deal you know. <laughs> Yeah. No, he has to build. He has to build her up and say, "Yeah, such so a nice say, woman with a great personality yeah. and, and very honest and smart and well respected in the community." Like, why couldn't Sean just admit it? Like, you know, like as if it's just just another day at the office. You know, oh, NASA, we I miss you. Even though you made fun of me and tortured me too, but uh, and, and NASA tried to actually pick up a girl. I actually was um, dating a girl, and I was at a show, and I went to the bathroom. And when I came back um, later that night, you know, uh, the girl told me that Nasser was trying to like uh, hook up with her and give her. His, he's like, get, "Here's here is my uh, my room key, and uh, you can stop by my room." She's like, "I'm I'm, I'm the Dave. What are you talking about?" Yes, but uh, he you know. he flunked out of chiropractic school. <laughs> he, he's not. He didn't go to. To be a physician, he he's a nice a guy, but uh, he does not therapist. have my my intellect and my you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, the good old days in NASA. All right, let's see what else is going on here. There was some shows this past you know, weekend. Dave, hold on. You, you know, listen. I was like backstage at the New York Pro or what is it? Night of the Champions when Mike Francois won it, right? And I went back there for a minute. I, I'm just thinking this now. And I heard, I mean, nobody knew who NASA was at that point. Mm-hmm. Was that the year he came in second? Yes. Okay. And he was like on the other side of a curtain pumping up and he was like holding court. Like, you, you know, <laughs> he wouldn't stop talking a mile a minute. And I was thinking, who is this moron? You know, who, I mean, he was making comment about every single thing you could think of loud, yeah. like that backstage yeah, about yeah. other competitors and, you know, how he looks. And, and I remember like peeping through. <laughs> and I was shocked when I saw he had red trunks on and big thick glasses. I didn't know who he was. And you know what he was doing in the mirror? Sure. They had a little mirror. He'd hit the crunch shot the most muscular like four hundred times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> like to check, you know, to see if he looked good, which he looked great. You know? Was that the year uh, uh, Milos was helping him? Uh no, nobody was out oh. helping him. He was just on his own. Milos didn't help him until Milos would come on the show and tell you that he, he, he gained the is 65 pounds. He went to. He did the Houston Pro and he was phenomenal. I mean, if someone can dig up pictures from the Houston Pro. Uh, and Milos helped them. Well, he was and great when he won the New York Pro that, the, the following no, year. No, he was even. His all, I think his all time craziest. Ask Milos, get his opinion. Was the Houston Pro. It was like a week or two weeks before. I think he won the next show after that. He might have won Night of the Champions. Oh, okay. That was the same, same year. Count them on 500 grams of glucose with uh, uh, <laughs> glucose powers. six times a day uh, with, with uh, uh, whey protein isolate, even though oh, you don't need protein. <laughs> you know, speaking of insulin, um, you know. No, we're my, talking about Milos, not insulin. No, I'm, insulin. I'm saying it's, it's, we know Milos had him probably on 6 million IUs of insulin also. But speaking of insulin, you know, my wife, Amanda, is. Um, was diagnosed as having gestational diabetes. Oh, yeah, you told me that. Blood yeah. sugars are not you know, being controlled well. So she got this blood gluco- glucometer from uh, Walmart. Uh-huh. And uh, she's testing her blood sugars, and they were a little high. And after one of the meals or something like that, because she, you know, she's not the, she's, she had like a picky eater. So she eats like, you know, sh- sometimes she'll eat stuff that's sugary and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know what? Let's test my blood sugar. And my blood sugar was higher than hers was. Now, we're not talking off the scales. We're talking about, you know, mm-hmm. slightly high. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? What's what the from? fuck's going on? I'm falling apart. I can't, I get shoulder replacements. I got I got to worry, you know, I don't eat too much protein I'm, because I don't want my kidneys to, to, to have, 
you know, I'm like becoming like a hypochondriac now. That's all I need is like another fucking thing on, on top of it all. Yeah, now what? I got now a heart what? arrhythmia. You know, I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm like the guy who's going to be held together with the scotch tape pretty soon. Well, it's it's emotional stress yeah. being manifested, uh, blah, 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 yeah. blah. So I went and got We a, talked about that. So I went and got a uh, my own my own glucometer today from uh, Walmart. I've been testing my blood sugar six hundred. Oh, what nonstop all, all day yeah. long? My thing is the tips of my fingers are like they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna probably they're calloused yeah. to, 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 to no end now because I keep sticking them with. The, first of all, to take your blood blood glu- I'd rather stick a needle in my arm and, and draw the blood out. Yeah, your finger. Stick- there's a lot of ner- What's it, a lot of nerves on the finger? It, I hate it. It's like this little. It's like this. With the, the thing that. Gets the blood out of your finger. It's like a spring-loaded needle. <laughs> Harpoon. Yeah, it's like, it is. It's like a. It's it like hurts. taking a. It's like seriously, like a, um, like a thumbtack. You ever you ever stick a thumbtack by accident in your finger? It fucking yeah. hurts, right? Well, yeah. it's this thumbtack that's on a much, spring. You push a button, and the fucking yeah. thumbtack hits the top of your finger, and then you, you squeeze the finger to get the blood out. And my fingers are so, the skin is so thick on that. I have to sometimes do it twice, you know. So I'm, I'm doing it. I'm testing it. And I'll, I got news for you. The, the blood glucometer is super cheap. You can get it for nine bucks, okay, in, in Walmart. Literally. That's why I tell everyone. If you're going to test blood sugar, you might as well test your blood sugar. It's nine bucks, okay? The thing that's expensive are the little test strips. But even still, in Walmart, they're so cheap. It's like mm. ten bucks for like a whole bottle of them. So I've been testing my blood sugars. And it, ironically, after meals, I'm fine. It seems to be in the morning I'm running a little bit high. Not not a lot, and I'm and most people would say you're fine. Okay, I'm I'm in the physiologic zone, but you know, I, I my research and talking with Colette, you know, Colette's the, the the insulin expert. She's like, you really should be under under this, you know. And I'm like, but I'm not. Does it matter? I'm a few points. So of course, I'm like paranoid because now the new the new thinking, uh, Chris is, you know, they always have these new theories of aging. Yeah, the new theory of aging is that if you are running chronically high blood sugars. I think did we talk about this? I could be losing my mind. Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, last week we did. We did a little bit. Okay. So the, the, what I was the, the 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 conventional thinking is that by running high blood sugars, okay, even a little bit high, they accumulate, and that could lead to you know dementia and loss of eyesight and and, and, and you know, numbness in your extremities. And so I'm like a I'm like a paranoid mess now because I don't I don't want it. My dad is like losing his fucking mind. I you know I pick him up at the hospital to bring him back to his you know. Uh, assisted living place he's you know he's asking me the kookiest questions we're driving and he's looking at the car in front of us and he's reading the license plate uh-huh my here this is the I, I, my dad had terrible vision his whole life wore glasses his whole life now he doesn't wear glasses because he had cataract surgery where they put a new lens on there but so he's, he's reading like signs better than i can okay and he keeps asking where's my glasses i'm like dad you don't need glasses he goes, I, I wore glasses my whole life. I said, Dad, you had cataract surgery. You, you have different new lenses on your eye now. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't need um you don't need <laughs> you don't need glasses. So he's reading the license plates off. I'm like, that he's like, um, that's a government car. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the license plate. It's one XP. I'm like, what is it? What the hell does that mean? How do you know that that's car-? he goes, it's a secret code. He goes, that that's the the government agencies. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I'm telling you. He, my dad's out of his fucking mind. He knows no. He's making up kooky, crazy stories, and I'm thinking to myself, my blood sugar is a couple of points high. I'm going to wind up like him. And yeah. you could understand, you know. And this is something that it's hard to explain to guys that are in their 20s and 30s. When you get into your 40s and you're getting closer to 50, and you're in your 50s, and I'm I'm going to be 50 next year, you start worrying about <laughs> becoming like your parents. You start looking at the genetic pool that you're dealing with and you start saying hmm (laughs) this is might be what i have something to look forward to and the more you're around it you know if my dad would drop dead tomorrow i'd probably forget about all this paranoia but because i'm around them all the time now uh constantly i'm saying to myself oh boy am i doing that am i making this move am i walking this way am i holding my shoulders this way you know and it 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 becomes nerve wracking, and, and I know there's a lot of people out there who listen to the show, and because they contact me, and they're worried about getting old, and are, are they damaging their this, are they damaging the liver, kidneys, eyes, you know, uh, you know, intestinal tract, you know, and and you can only do so much without driving yourself fucking nuts, and that's I, I'm driving myself nuts, and I'm giving advice to other people, so oh, don't worry about it, don't drive yourself crazy, and I'm driving myself crazy, so you know, if you take your fiber supplement, that's 
that's your colon, you know, health. If you take, you know, something for your kidneys, like kidney stuff that I sell at daypointment.com, that's, you can flush your kidneys a couple times a year. Take a, a milk thistle supplement, like the liver stable, uh, you know, I, I sell on my website. You, you could flush, keep your kidney tubules open, the, the, the bile ducts open so you can drain your kidney. You know, you keep track of your blood sugars, you know, don't eat too many carbs, you know, you you won't you know accumulate you know in, uh, glucose in your in your nerve endings, <laughs> and, but there's only so much you can do without going nuts. I'm afraid to eat anymore. I mean, does it get to that point? You ever get to that point where you think too much? No, about I don't worry about any. I don't. I don't think about any of those things. Yeah. No, because you know, I, I mean, I'm petrified. I gotta tell what's you. the? Uh, I mean, I I I'm like a carbon copy of my father, so I, I think of that because I I but. Uh, in terms of the way I look and mannerisms mm. to a large degree. But, I mean, part of life is just getting old, man. I mean, if you, if you, you there's no slowing it down. Yeah. It's so weird. How everything it? just starts falling up. Did nothing stop working? Oh, everything fall, You know, just, it's 100%. You can equate it to a 100% equatable to a car or a house. You buy an old house. Yeah, and you you put a lot of money into it. You buy a brand new house. You don't have to put much upkeep into it, money wise. You yeah. buy a brand new car. Generally, you know, first five years, no no issues. You buy a used car that's already old, and you know everything conks out on it. That's why Money's at least the same way. I give it back right when the problems start. Yeah, I know. That's right. <laughs> I know. I know you love leasing because you can't deal with the the headaches. No, I don't want to because it's like getting old. I don't want to deal. I want to trade it in. The problem is you can't trade your body in. For well, well, some people trade their wives in. I'm not telling you to, <laughs> what you, what to do, but you're funny. All right, they let me. Do, uh, they get- Let's let's go over what 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 when I want because I like to people like to hear their names announced on this show. Evidently, that's what I've been told. I don't. I don't I think. Know by the way, we've done a quote of the week the last couple. Weeks. We did. We no, we did. We did two oh, last okay. week. Mention some names. All right, let me mention some names. Uh, South Carolina Grand Prix Pro Bikini Show. Uh, Tawny oh. Eubanks uh, wins that. Qualifies for next year's Olympia. Congratulations, sir. By the way, you know uh, in this new uh, Olympia qualification uh, rules that they set up. The the last qualifier for the current year, so let's say uh, in 2018, the last the last qualifier will be August 5th or something like that, or 4th, which I think is a little early, don't you think? I understand that they want to book people's flights, and they don't want to do it the last minute, probably, and they want to get the, the program set up, but, you know, two months ahead of the Olympia, I mean, you would think that it would be like September 1st or something like that would be the cutoff, but it's not. So if you, let's say you win a show... In August, it doesn't count towards that year's Olympia anymore. Where's Lee Thompson? Who's he going to affiliate with, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll call up Raphael, even though he bashed him to death also. you know. Uh, anyway, so maybe. I just thought I'd throw that in. All right, Tony Eubanks wins, qualifies yeah. for uh, next year's Olympia. Uh, I, I like her. I like her physique a lot. Marsha Kongalves from Brazil, second place. And uh, Abby Gaetano in third. And there's a man. There was a Masters Pro Bikini. You know how I feel about that. Abby Gaetano wins that. Congratulations. La la la. Uh, and then there was also the Titans Grand Prix, out in California there. And they had a men's physique. And Godfrey Saranda from uh, San Diego wins. And Stan Morrison was in second and third place. Xavius Gaiden. Congratulations. So that was uh, all the pro action in the IFBB this past weekend. What's coming up, Chris? That's the question. What's coming up? To me, the Nationals are the next you know, big exciting thing. I know the Kentucky Muscle Classics next week. Uh, that's always a, a big show, but it's kind of men's physique you know, figure. And then they got the Sacramento Pro also next week. Is that Honey Show? Yeah, that's Honey Show, I think. Was it it's a, uh, bodybuilding or not bodybuilding? That's a good question. I think it is bodybuilding. Honey would have to do bodybuilding, I would think. It's pro bikini. I only see pro bikini. Huh, maybe it's only pro bikini. Maybe this is not honey show. I see Evigen on there. Hmm. Oh, it's NP. It's, oh, it's only a pro bikini, I guess. All right. My bad. When's the next pro show coming out? Oh, O'Mel shows next week. And that's what I wanted to bring up. Ugh, thank God I, I looked at the schedule here. I'll be out there for the pre judging. I won't be there at night. Bringing Logan to his first bodybuilding show. 
By the way, speaking of Logan, oh, I saw, I, I caught your. Uh, did you see the video? Teaching, yeah, how to be the uh, Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> He's, we, you know, what? talk about looking like you. Does he look like you or what? Yeah, he looks like me a little bit. He looks like my dad a lot too. But he um, he's he can't speak yet, but he knows all this. He knows sounds. So when I do the roar, you know, the Incredible Hulk, my Incredible Hulk, he he has the whole loudness thing down. <laughs> if you want to see what we're talking about, it's on my Instagram and Facebook page. It's a video where uh, I'm teaching Logan how to do the Incredible Hulk, and him and I do the Incredible Hulk. So that was pretty funny. So anyway, yeah, Mel show will be this uh, coming weekend. Uh, the Mel Chancy Pro Show. Uh, it's going to be. There's actually a figure pro show there. There's an over 40 men's physique, over 40 figure, and over 40 bikini. So the Masters will be in town. It's at the Four Points Sheraton. And uh, I'm looking forward to get, seeing Big Mel. I haven't seen him in a while. You know, it's it's hard to go to, to go to places when you have kids. I know you know this better than I do, probably. But uh, you know, I I don't you know Mel lives a half hour from me, and I hardly ever see him because I don't go do anything. It's just because it, it, you, you can't bring you can't bring him any place. That's the problem. You can't bring Logan has a limited span of, of of how long he can last anywhere I bring him. He's got a pretty good figure lineup. Holy mackerel! There's got to be twenty two people in the show. Hmm. Yeah, good. just just uh... good for him. Good lineup. Very good lineup. It, this might be the only pro show on the on the west south, southwestern Florida coast here, right? Because all the all the pro shows are usually you know in Miami, yeah. Fort Lauderdale. This one's in Fort Myers, like right in my backyard. Doesn't get much better than that. I have no excuse not to go to that, right? Yeah. How far was it from you? Ten minutes. Probably. Yeah, it's probably like twenty minutes, but yeah. It's, Plus, I like Mel, you know. Mel's, a, Mel's good people. Mel's always there. You know, he's the kind of guy you could pick up the phone at, like, at four in the morning and he'll, he'll say, what do, you, what do you need me to meet you? You know, that kind of thing. So that's, that's, you know, there's not that many people around that are really like that anymore. I see Tim Gardner's, uh, his partner on this show. They'll be promoting that show. You know, Mel sold his gym. I didn't know if you know that. How long do you have it? That's, that's, that's quick. Yeah, he got lucky. Some some uh, wealthy guy's son wanted the gym, and the, they made a deal. And you know, money talks. Mel's a businessman, so Mel sold the gym, and I think he still trains there. But uh, he sold the gym, so it was a good gym. He he did a nice job on it. You know, well, I thought he loved the gym. What's he gonna do all day? I don't know. That's a good question. He, he he Mel likes to lay in the pool all day, though. Speaking of pools, I'm actually looking. We're looking into building a pool now. But I got a really really high quote. I don't know, and I don't know if I'm getting ripped off or not. So I got another person coming tomorrow to give me another quote. So we have a, a weird shape. It's funny because our backyard is big, but it's like you know how they have like these offsets. You can only build so far onto the back of your property, and yeah. So I got to build. I'm building a long pool. It'll still be wide, but it's it's going to be a longer pool. To be honest with you, I don't even need a pool. Uh, although I, my wife says you say that now, but as soon as you get the pool, you'll be in it all the time. And uh, we're building a pool cage, of course, because I refuse to be because insects find I'm like an insect attractor, you know. And my son is worse than I am. We must have the same, you know, sweet blood that I do because we could be outside, my my wife, my son, and, and myself, and and my son and I will get eaten alive. Amanda will get one, won't we'll get one big bug bite. I don't know. So mm-hmm. luckily, they have the uh, these very fine screens that, uh, that they put on there. They're like, you want the fine screen or the regular screen? I'm like, I want the screen that no bug can yeah, get the, through. Yeah, that, impenetrable. That's, yeah, why would you want? You want a semi screen? You want a screen? <laughs> I because I guess the, you want, the screen. You want, you want a shoulder replacement that's pretty good or that really works well? <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing: if the, the screens that are very fine that will prevent every bug from getting in during the hurricanes, they usually, you know, they usually don't do so well. But I'm like, I don't care. We don't get hurricanes that much. I'll cut the screens if I have to. I'll redo them. I don't want any bugs. In, if there's a single bug in, in my pool cage, I will not be in the pool. So that's the, that's my um, that's my shtick. So we're looking into the pool, we're building the pool. Right now, we we just redid my bathroom. And not that anyone cares. And, uh, yeah, you didn't need it. I thought, I thought it was fine. Yeah, you know what? It, it, it was. 
it was a, it's it's weird when you have to when you buy someone else's house and you're like living in their bathroom, you know, and the floors and they, they did some they took some shortcuts. It just wasn't the shower splashed out. It was like a cool shower, but it was like it yeah, I thought you loved that shower. I I liked that it was open, but you know what happened? It would all the water would splash out the sides, and then you when you get out of the shower, you you take a step and you'd almost kill yourself, fall on your mm-hmm. head. So we uh, we redid it. I I got to take credit for the. Um, the design of the shower, even though I didn't do it, I, it was it was my concept. So I'll t- I'll do a video on it. People will see it. It's pretty cool, actually. Put marble down. It, it'll probably get ruined. I'm, I'll probably be the one to ruin it too. I'll like spill hair dye on it or something like that. You know, terrible. So what are you doing with it? What do you what do you nah, you're, you're breaking up what that shower? Or? We, I took I got rid of the bathtub. The, it was a big jacuzzi tub. My wife won't put the won't put the jacuzzi oh, yeah, stuff yeah, on yeah, because did, she says that there's that, yeah. there's uh, this this cooties in there. Uh, from the, the former people. So I'm like, you know what? We don't take baths. I said, let's get the fucking sh- the bath. is taking up the whole bathroom. So I said, get the bath out of here. And I, and I had to make a big shower stall, walk-in shower stall. So I moved the shower stall forward. There's more room, and it's it's actually pretty cool. Actually, I, and I got I, we did nice Diana Royale marble on the floors and the walls, and it looks it looks. Looks like a different house now. So now my this, this is the reason I was telling. So now my now Amanda says, you know, we really should. We should extend it to the rest of the house because she doesn't like the wood floors. Because I guess the people who lived there before had dogs and uh, had a big dog, and the dog kind of made a couple nicks in the floor and the bamboo floor because you know bamboo is very soft wood. Yeah. I so she, bam- what do you mean? Bamboo is like crazy hard wood. They said it's soft. It makes it easy to make no, bamboo, scratches in it. You ever get hit by a bamboo hard piece of bamboo? <laughs> Evidently, bamboo floors bamboo are soft. Floor. They're soft floors, from what I understand. They build so, in different countries. They build. They use. Bamboo is like rebar for building porn <laughs> Do they concrete. Really? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So, anyways, they, that's yeah. So we're gonna get on. so that, so if to put down marble in in place of the uh, the the um, bamboo, I thought they just put it right on top of the bamboo. But they have to so they have to rip the floor up. The problem with bamboo floors is they're 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 like basically glued down. I said, all right. Well, I said there's no problem because I'm not the one doing it. But how long is this going to take me to rip the floor up? Four days. Yeah. I said, what the fuck are we going to do for four days while you're ripping up the floor in my house? I said, my son stays here during the day, you know. So I, it, it, I have a feeling this is going to turn into like a, uh, a very difficult job. But I'm look, yeah, I would like to, I, I'm looking forward to the outcome. I just don't want to go to – I don't like the uh, – now I know why my dad doesn't want anyone – never wanted anyone coming to the house to like redo his kitchen or anything like that. <laughs> he didn't want to be inconvenienced, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it is an inconvenience, though. It yeah. is, you know. Anyway, so we're we're redoing it. You know, it is. I think when you move into a house, you have to put. You have to do a. There's a certain amount of stuff you have to do to it to make it your own. If it's not a new yeah. house, yeah. And once you do that, it's like you feel like okay, now I own the house. You know, it's. Mine. Well, you didn't buy the furniture, did you? you no, you no, no, no. We. We we did a few things so far. We're doing it little by little. There's no there's no rush, but uh, you know, as we have the baby coming in December, so we really want to get the. This bathroom and the floor is done because it's going to be very difficult. You know, when the, once once the baby's here, anything that's going to go on inside the house, the noise is going to wake the baby up. Yeah. So we don't need that. So anyway, that's um, that's my life. There, we, there wasn't much bodybuilding to talk about this week, but there was a lot of gossip to talk about. I'm trying to think what else is going on here that I didn't mention. Um, what's going on with you? Anything exciting? You've been quiet. Um. Nothing. Three kids is like you get up, right? I, what did I tell you today? Did I, or did I not tell you that today? You didn't tell me anything today. That's what I'm saying. No, I did. You... Today, today was soccer, two games. Yesterday was football, you know, and, and soccer practice. So the weekend flies by with just... Uh, do you do you actually stay at the just... practices and watch like and, and study the, um, uh, the game plan? So to speak? No. No, no, you leave. You no. drop them off. I just drop them off. I'm not that good of a dad, but I, like... You never wanted to be a coach or anything like that? I wouldn't know what to... All, all I, you know what? All I know is this. I know hustle. You know, I scream hustle or... Uh, you Did know. you ever want to get involved with, like, doing, like, the, the nutrition for the kids? Like, hey, guys, oh, I'm going to give you, you a little nutrition. No. Like, why not? No. You could... Uh, don't you think it can improve performance? Like, I, no, I might I want to. Like, I don't. I think I, I don't think I don't think nutrition has any effect on performance for kids. I really don't. I think it's just all like uh, desire and, and focus and yeah. and you know passion to go out there and you know play. Do your kids practice like when they come home? Like, like in, uh, other than practice? no, that's that's the old no, no, they don't. 
I never did either. I was lazy. Yeah, they, they, that, that's the... Uh, they don't, and I don't push them, but I, I remind them that average is average. Mm-hmm. I tell them all the time, I'm not average. I'm not average. Pick anything that I do, I'm not average in it. Not even right. close to average. Right. So if you want to be average, that's a choice that you have to make. Okay, so you because guilt, I'm, you guilt, I'm not going to force them to... You guilt them into it, essentially. Well, you know... I, I lay out on the line, black and white, what what you know, what choice you want to make because I think they're at an age and smart enough to know. Um, what if they came to you and said, "Hey, Dad, skills, we want to." So, what, what's some of the skills that you need to to, to right. be successful? I, I do this. I say, you know what? Even when they sleep late, I said, you know what? <clears throat> no successful people and nothing sleep late. <laughs> it doesn't change anything, probably. No, I just just remind them. No, because I did not sleep late when I was a kid. I was mm-hmm. always up and doing something. That yeah. I know for sure. I was always up and doing something, whether it be a hobby, whether it be sports, you know, bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. I was always up and out the door, ready to do something. Yeah, I like to sleep, though. I think it's, I think, yeah. I don't know why, but I there's plenty sleeping. of time when you're dead to catch True. up on sleep. True. Now I'm, I'm I don't sleep at all now. You know, I because I have I have kids. When you have kids, you you can't sleep. No, you have to. When you have kids, wait, wait. No, you have a kid. You have a kid. And when you, I'm dreading you, the next one. Because, when you get two, yeah. you 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 make there will be you will probably remember the day where you decide. Okay, I'll never get sleep ever again, <laughs> and I'm, I'll be okay with that because once you accept it. Yeah. You know, it, your life gets a lot easier. But right. when you try to fight and struggle with it, that mm-hmm. God, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to sleep. I mean, what am I? You'll, you'll, you'll Some kill days, yourself. Yeah, no, you're over. right. You're right. Some days, I it, it's, it's a rough. It's a rough to sleep. He, he's better now, Logan, and he doesn't really wake up as much. But I know once the new one comes, I'll be in charge of Logan, and my wife will be in charge of the new one, and forget about it. Oh, great! Logan's going to pick up all your bad habits. <laughs> They pick him up thing, early. You know what the funny thing is? My dad used to tell me that when I was a kid, this is when he this is when he was still coherent, that he had to wrestle with me every night to tire me out, like so that I would go to sleep. Oh, yeah, and yeah. my son is is that he's he runs laps. We have a really long hallway upstairs, and he has this little walker. He doesn't even need the walker, but he likes to push it. It's like a shopping cart almost, and he'll run up and down the hallways. I mean, literally, it's got to be. It's got to be almost a hundred, you know, hundred meters. You know? Yeah, it's like you running two yeah. football fields. And I'm like, I, and he wants me to chase him. I got to run after him. I have to oh, walk fast chasing. after him. Yeah. I can't run. I, I walk faster after him. I'm like, I'm coming. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming. He'll do that. He'll do like 25 laps, you know, at least. I'm like, I'm ready to like fall down. I'm, I'm so tired. And I'm not even, he's running. I'm, I'm walking fast, you know. And then he's like, he goes, brings me over to this, we have this like yoga mat and he points because he doesn't speak, and I have to sit down with him, and then I, I stretch. And when he does, he gets behind me, and he pushes on my back so that I can get a better stretch. <laughs> oh, so he's and, helping you. He's yeah, helping yeah, you do physical yeah, therapy. Yeah. <laughs> then when he gets sick of that, he pushes me down. I have to lay on my back, and then he will. He'll walk on my stomach, and I have to hold his hands while he's walking on my stomach. He's we get the whole. He's got me trained like a like a seal. And then after that. He gets me up, and I have to get on the treadmill. I don't know why he likes to watch me walk on the treadmill, and he imitates me walking on the treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, all this is done with, with not a sound. The only word he says is "dad, dad," and 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 Jed for the cat Jedi. And he doesn't say anything yeah. else. Everything else well, is he, hand signals. He's, he's communicating. Yeah, he's communicating the way he needs to communicate. He's pointing at Working me. for him, right? Yeah, oh, works. He, he's mo- he's bossing me around like I'm like the hired help over there. It's crazy pretty funny anyway he's uh you know kids keep you on your toes i think that's what that's what'll keep you and i young the fact that we have young kids i'm well, convinced we'll of it we'll see in, either in, that or it'll put us in the insane I lose asylum. My mind. i'm gonna I'm request leave. chris right now that uh we have to tell our wives this if both of us lose our our marbles and we need to go to like a, a memory ward or something like that i'm gonna request that you and i be put in the same memory ward together is that is that you think that's doable? You'll be retired yeah, you, down in Florida by then, probably anyway. So well, I'll, I'll be you know what I'll be saying still. See, I'll I'll, I'll lie on my my memory wood bed, which they charge they'll charge me ten grand a month for. <laughs> and I'll you know what, keep me. I'll say, Dave, tell me a Blackman story. <laughs> 
we'll we'll keep saying we got a radio show to do. They're like, yeah, sure you do, guys. Uh, it's dinner time. <laughs> we really have a radio show to do. It's Monday night. Uh, I'm gonna seriously. I'm, I'm requesting that we be put in the same uh, insane asylum because yeah. well, this way at know, least it won't I, be I so told bad. You, I told you I was a carbon copy of my father, right? <laughs> the way I look and mannerisms. I I went two nights. What is this Sunday? I went Friday. I ran a million errands. I took my 12 year old and my four year old to see my father because my four year old can't doesn't see my father much and he uh, had asked me do you have a father <laughs> which i thought was sad uh, so uh and so we went to see him and we walked through the door and the nurse behind the desk said you must be here to see rocco oh because you look that much like him well no of course i do this how'd you know i i looked at my jacket my muscle tech jacket and i thought it might might have said yeah. like a cedo on it or something right. you know what i mean sure I'm like what 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 i get you know how'd you know and I didn't realize it until I didn't ask, you know. And then I saw him, and and my four year old said, uh, "Oh, no, he looks just like you." Wow! So you got to send me a picture of your dad. Oh, I will. They were the, the exact, exactly look alike. But you see, so your dad must look pretty young then, because you look yeah, like he, he did when you young. were twenty five years old. He's still he's eighty, and he looks. Um, uh, he doesn't have wrinkles. Really, he does not have wrinkles. No. My dad the only thing that, that he, the only thing that you can tell that he's eighty since he's been in the memory ward, he hasn't had a chance to dye his hair, uh, which bothers him. Yeah. So he remembers that he used to dye his hair. That he does remember. Uh, my dad yeah. thinks he looks great. My dad's always telling the nurses, and he goes, "It's a shame that I'm falling apart." He goes, "Because I'm, so, <laughs> I, I still look so good." From <laughs> well, the first time I saw you, father, what I say, he's handsome and still looks young. Yeah, oh, you'd love that. Probably you hear him say that. My um. He he's back in his normal place. I as I said earlier, and the he loves the only. It's funny because my dad was like such a liberal, like every loves everyone type of person earlier in life, and now he's like so like stereo. He became his like father. Like he's like he only likes the black nurses, the, the women. That's the only ones he listens to because they don't take his shit. You know, they're yeah. like. Sal, get your ass up. You know, they get in the shower. You know, and he, I don't want to be bothered. Now. They're like, we're not asking you. We're telling you, you know, and, and he listens to them. But Asian women, he will not listen to. He, he Why? berates. I don't know. He berates them. He puts them down. You know, he uh, and usually white women, unless they're real tough, he's he's he doesn't handle well. The men, men, he's he's better with white men. He's OK with. He's got all these like different like, you know, people that he he doesn't respect or he does respect and it's the it's the funniest thing seeing he's got actually. little categories going on yeah. <laughs> and the, the one of the black nurses was telling me she's like you know your father you know when he first came back here i don't know if he was confused because he had like a urinary tract infection and he came back and he was like talking like ridiculous like like about masturbation and all kinds of crazy stuff. she's like i didn't want him to get thrown out of here so i took him and i i, I locked him in his room and i just brought him his meals because usually they go down to the these fancy restaurants they have like these yeah. little dining halls down there she's like i kept him out of there for two days until he come until he calmed down the antibiotics worked on him i'm like <laughs> i'm like thank you thank you I, all i need is him getting kicked out of this place i said this would be the would be the, a nightmare for me so that's uh, that's what's going on with Sal. Sal remembers me, and he remembers Logan. He doesn't remember. He calls my wife Claudia every time she comes in. Claudio. Yeah, Claudia was his brother's. Oh, well, close, ex-wife. close, close. Amanda, Claudia. It's only two letters apart. <laughs> and he's consistent too. That's the funny thing. He consistently calls it. Wait, Logan. he consistently calls it that. Yes, consistently oh, calls well, it. Then, that. then it's, maybe, maybe it just reminds him of one of his. Uh, uh, yeah. I, you know what the problem is? He thinks that I'm his brother, not his son. That's the problem. He thinks, that, yeah. and when I tell him he's 87, he he thinks I'm kidding. He goes, "I'm 87. What are you talking about? I'm like, how old do you think you are?" He's like, "I don't know." How old are you? I said, "Don't ask me how old I am. I'm your son. I'm not your brother." He's yeah. like, "Oh, right." <laughs> oh shit! So, oh, I'm going to be having Lou Ferrigno on the show. In the next week or two, uh, uh-huh. to promote his Frigno Legacy oh, Classic. That's right, and ask him. Uh, That's always the highlight some, of the. You got to ask him some Donald Trump questions because he's he's working with Donald Trump again. He, oh, he is. What is he doing with them? 
Isn't he that he's the head of the President's Council on Physical Fitness? Oh, they, did they? They put him in? They made Louis? Yeah, yeah because I Arnold, uh, Donald puts everyone he likes, you know. I didn't know that. Is that is that really what Louis got that appointed to that position? Yeah, I thought he, yeah, Google it. I think he was. Um, he is. He is. Hmm. He, he beat out um, Richard Simmons and... Uh, Richard Simmons. <laughs> And Kenny Jones. <laughs> oh, that's, that was pretty good. No, he. I think he is, though. Seriously. I'm looking it up. And ask Lou. Oh, well, I guess Lou's affiliated with two. Which IFPV is Lou now? Because he's a, you know. No, he's a, he's with the, with Mannion. With the IP, they have the IPV Pro League contest. Um... Saying Frigna wants to head the council. I don't know if he's was appointed. Hulk star Lou Frigno tapped to head the Trump Fitness Council. This was I in August. You. I don't know if he's if he was ever confirmed. Lou Frigno, perhaps best known for a starring role in the TV series The Incredible Hulk, is reportedly set to accept the top position on Donald Trump's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. I don't know if he did if he accepted it. Alexander Fedorov is going to be partners with them. <laughs> uh, I I think it's a great choice. It, I, I don't know if they did it or not, but um, you know, there's a picture here of Lou at the uh, at the opening of the Avengers: Age of Ultron uh-huh. the movie because you know he does the Hulk, he does the voice of the Hulk in all yeah. the movies. I wonder what he gets. I got to ask him when he gets paid for that. It can't be that Will much. We tell you. But I'm I'm looking at him. He's hitting a double. He's hitting like an arm shot. You know, like you know when you when you get bodybuilders get pictures taken and they they hit they flex their bicep. up. You know, he's got yeah. the, the tight eyes on shirt on. And I'm telling you, he looks way better than I do. That's for sure. And he's in his sixties, right? Yeah, well, who's got to be sixty something? 2010. I remember distinctively being at. Uh, no, it was twelve. 2012, when he was at the Masters, you know, hanging out in Miami, he looked. Right. At, like really young, I remember looking at him. You and I were talking to him, and you were—I think you were interviewing him, or yeah. you were talking to him—and I was just like looking at him, thinking. So that was only five years ago. At that point, he looked crazy young, and I asked him. I said, "You know what? You look," or I said, "You you look crazy young," and he said, "It's because of my wife. We've got a, a good marriage." <laughs> no, no, he was. That was his. You know, he's got a full head of hair. First of all. Yeah, he has great hair. Second best bodybuilding hair next yeah. to Jay Cutler. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And and he's still big. He's still muscular. The guy's got oh, he's gotta have like an eighteen inch arm at least, maybe maybe more. He's just a big man, you know. He's he was always big, you know, though. And he's lean. So, he's very so, he's ripped too. He's got ripped abs. I it's unbelievable. Well he's, he lives a bodybuilding lifestyle. He said yeah. that to you, I think. Yeah, he's, he's still, still eating the you know, tuna and chicken. Yeah, that's right. On the right. plane, right? Didn't you? Didn't he open it? Well, you have a cool freak no story, right? No, Roman, he's actually sixty-five years old. Romano told me that Louis on the airplane. He, I don't know if he flew with him once, and he was sitting in first class. Like John wasn't in first class, but he was walking back, you know, through the <laughs> island, and he passes Louis. And Louis sitting there with like a Tupperware container with tuna and rice, no, I sticking up the whole plane. Sushi. Wait a minute! I thought he used a can opener in first class. I'm serious. <laughs> he might have, he and might've. opened up the can of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did, but needless to say, he had the tuna rice and he had his like muscle books. You know, he's still reading the muscle magazines. You know, I don't know if he does it. Probably now he's on his phone. I'm sure, like reading stuff, listening to Ark's muscle. Anyway, <laughs> that's great. I love Louis. I love interviewing him too because he's a, he's always a good interview. And you know, it, yeah, I gotta interview. I gotta take my hat off to him because. It's a very tough interview for Lou to do because Lou can't see my lips, you know. So I have to put the laptop in front of me so he can. It's hard over Skype to read someone's lips, you know. So um, Chris is uh, Chris Minns, his partner in the show, is always there with him. But uh, uh, I, I have to, you know, I always thank Louie profusely because he always takes time out. You know, he takes mm-hmm. he'll talk about the show and and he's good. He's got a good sense of humor. I can ask him like I can up if. If I interviewed Arnold, I'd be a little upset. I'd have to like ask Cedric for like questions to ask him, you know. But I wouldn't know what to ask him. I'd be afraid to offend him. Louis, you can't offend him. He he doesn't care. He every he, he laughs at himself. You know, he's he's very good like that. 
and it makes it very easy to interview him. Because let's face it, Louis is a star. You know, he's a star. He's a Hollywood star. He's he was a top level bodybuilder. He's an icon in our industry. So, yeah. even though I'm friends with him, I still, uh, you know, when I when I interview him, I still have to come up with original questions. I feel like I have to go above and beyond. You know, when I did when I interview. Yeah, I know you're going to tell him that you you already taught the Hulk. Uh, most muscular to to your son. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him for tips, like if there's any like things like things he can think of that could uh, I can help uh, with, the, with the impression. <laughs> there's another video I put up. You probably saw it too, when I actually put the Hulk mask on, and my wife thought oh, yeah, I, I, I was gonna scare the crap out of my son, but he's too smart. He knows it's me. If someone else would have put it on, he would have gotten he would have cried. But with me on, he's laughing like aha, daddy's being a dummy. You know, his daddy's being uh, funny. So that's all she wrote. It's uh, it's late. We're gonna get moving here. Um, looking forward to seeing you down at the NPC Nationals. Have we confirmed your condo? Is that gonna be no? no? I, don't, I don't know if I have confirmed. I haven't confirmed it yet because I don't know if it's booked or not booked, and that's another story, dude. Oh gosh. Well, let, you know, let us know. Let us know. Yeah, I'll let you know. All right, that's gonna take us to the end of another episode. Remember, until next week, with Heavy Muscle Radio, the truth hurts. Good night, everyone.